Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is the regular playthrough, and I'm Elon Paul. So we're doing the regular playthrough again here, but actually we're taking a little bit of a deviation from things. We're not going to continue with the Artemis mission. We're going to do another week where we're going to do an alternative mission. We're going to do the Dreams of the Deep today. And if things go well and we can get this done pretty quick, we're actually going to go ahead and do a little bit of research into freighters. That is, derelict freighters that you find in space. So... Let's go ahead and get this ball rolling today. So like I said, we're going to go ahead and do uh, the Dreams of the Deep. It's kind of a dark storyline in the midst of all this, but it's, it's worthy to get because you get a lot of items from it. As you can see, I don't have my mod on, so you're going to get pulse lines no matter what I do here. I had to turn them off due to some issues I had earlier. So we're going to this particular system here we've been to before. Actually, I think it has a base computer there because I could have just taken a portal there, but eh, you know, it's okay. Dreams of the Deep involves kind of like I said, a dark storyline. Crashed ship with people on board. Crashes into deep waters on a watery world. In this case, it's this world right here, which looks more like a moon. Yes, Reeking Moon, it says. Which currently has a storm, looks like, going on. And as we come in, you're going to notice that we're, first of all, not over an ocean. We're over land. And what we're looking for is we're searching for usually an abandoned structure. I mean, it looks like there's a structure right there with a landing pad. Let's go ahead and head over there. At least it has a landing pad. We can save some uh, ruster juice, if you will. And we'll look from here. This looks like a non-abandoned structure, so if I'm going to be taking a stab here... Oh, okay. It is the structure after all. Okay, well, let's take a look inside and see what we find. Oh, uh, by the way, before we run inside, I wanted to show you something. First of all, there's our ship. We've kept with the same ship. I reorganized things inside the ship. and got a couple extra add-ons in regards to uh, certain items to boost some stuff. Nothing special there. But you also notice that I now have an A-class multi-tool that has extra slots in it. So we have gone ahead and upgraded our multi-tool, and it is working a little better. This one happens to have one... Uh, I j one upgraded slot on it. Let me just see something here. There's two others over here that we currently have our bolt caster on. You see it does a little bit of good, better damage with it. It's not terrific, but it's okay. Um, we are going to be getting other weapons for this later on, but I just wanted to highlight that. And we finally have done the ultimate and have gotten our exosuit upgraded a little bit. So you can see we've got extra stuff in here. I went ahead and put this in this particular slot over here because I'm going to be using it later. And we've got a couple extra items. We've got more, you know, slots in here now so we can, you know, really get some, some the ball moving along a little bit better now. We're not so limited with space. Okay, so here we go. Distorted voice. Log 2015F, breach event. Plus 407 souls. So keep in mind, 407 souls means it's 407 days since the event occurred. So an event occurred, and then 407 days later, we have this particular transmission. So they're out of order, so you'll see what happens here. If you are listening, you have likely found our final log. I leave this trace as a memory of my fallen friends, and a warning to others who may end up on our path. I cannot deny myself the vain hope that someone may find me, though I beg you, do not follow. The haunting transmission ends. I notice the stranger has left behind an upgrade module for the aeration membrane. I take the upgrade module. Its installation history contains the serial number of its owner's starship. Perhaps I ought to follow. So, you know, the first thing you would do is you'd say to yourself, uh, no, but we're going to go ahead and do it. And I'm glad I upgraded my exosuit because I needed the extra room for things like this. So we're going to go ahead and put that in here. Um, you'll notice it doesn't seem to link up with anything because it's just a deep water air harvester. So it allows us to go underwater better 
That's the best I can give you. It uses oxygen uh, from the water around you to help you survive underwater longer. So let's go ahead and exit. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay, perform a scan to search for the previous owner. Okay. So we picked up all kinds of stuff, but that's not what we wanted. Reach the stranger's starship. Let's see. Uh, over that way. On a different planet. Okay, we'll head out there. Ah, and you'll notice it's a water world. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's go ahead and scan it while we're here and while it's highlighting. Grassy planet. I sentinel activity, you'll notice. So that means that we just don't want to upset the sentinels, but they're not going to attack us on sight. Pretty planet, though. Blue atmosphere around the uh, space around it, so that means the skies ought to be blue. Okay, let's flip over, shall we? And you'll notice we're coming in over the ocean. So now we need to find this ship and it will be underwater but you'll notice that there's really not much to find but you'll notice that I, I seem to have something on my radar here indicating that there's a sunken ship right about here so let's find some place to land um, let me check here which one's closer okay I think those are closer let's go back to them Oh, okay. That's a weird view. And we'll go ahead and come for a landing right here. All right. <laughs> it dropped me in the water. That's hilarious. Okay, so we know it's over there. Okay, so let's go ahead up here. And you notice, see, there's a sentinel. He's not going to attack me on sight, but... See? Now he will. But he won't attack me even after I did that. Watch. See? He's done looking at me. And as you know, while we're here... Let's go ahead and find out how many animals. Twelve species on this planet. Okay. We'll get them for now. I don't know if we're going to find all of them. Okay, let's go under the water. So we're headed in the right direction. Okay, so this is the direction we want to do. No. Now, as we're using our jets underwater, it doesn't use them as... Um... Doesn't use them anywhere near as much as you might think. Let's go ahead and look at everything under here while we're here. Take a quick look around, make sure we don't have any other red dots, because we want to try to gather as many as we can. The more nanites we get, the better. Huh. There's damaged machinery under the ocean now. I didn't know that. Let's head this way. That looks like that's the landing zone we need to go to. Deepest ocean. <laughs> Alright, so as we get down here, you'll notice a couple things. First of all, there is a ship. It's a lame-looking ship. But before I do anything, it has this little capsule over here. Go to the glowing end. And you're inside an atmosphere bubble. It allows you to get everything back. So the oxygen harvester is down to 18%. It only takes ox it takes oxygen or life support gels. So we're just going to use the oxygen. No big deal. Out into the water. It tells us to go to this particular device here. Log 003A. Now you notice it says breach event is only four souls. So it's only four days after wherever whatever event occurred. 
Most of the crew are dead. Only those of us already suited up when the asteroid hit survived the initial decompression. We were lucky that smaller starships were able to get clear before the hull imploded. None of our ships have hyperdrive capability. We should be able to retrieve the blueprints from the freighter's main data bank, though it appears to have crashed in the deep ocean. Thankfully, we still have the plans for the Nautilin. So you see we get a Nautilin chamber and a marine shelter, which is what we were just in. Okay, so that's done. But hey, while you're here, let's check the damaged machinery. We get a scanner module out of it. Um, not interested in the light. Um, you know what? We have Atlas 1 Pass, so let's go ahead and collect stuff from it. I don't really need that anymore. Okay, Corvax casings, and we'll go ahead and grab the items out of there. And it looks like we have some buried technology, but you know my trick on doing that. I don't know if it works under the water. Nope. We'll have to use our terrain manipulator to get to it. Which you can use underwater. There we go. Get some salvage data out of it. Got three of it. Now, if you want, you can make this ship yours. The Atagony Architect. Uh, let's see. It's actually a halfway decent ship. It's already got the launch thrusters repaired. So what we can do is we can repair this with the Hermetic Seal metal plate. And we can... It's not really worth a whole lot, but it, as, a, as an A-class, it's got a decent charge to it. So we'll probably get about two, three million for it. Let's go ahead and claim the ship. Let's build the metal plate and the hermetic seal and we'll repair that now we won't repair anything else okay we'll repair nothing else all we're going to do is go back to our original starship and if you remember where it was it should be that direction because it's not showing on our radar anymore see because we claimed another ship let's go all the way up to the surface I'll recharge that anyway. Let's get up to the surface, and that way we can check to see where the water is. Any uh, red dots anywhere nearby I can scan? No. No red dots. Okay, we're good. To the surface. And where's the land at? That way, so we know our ship is over there. So we'll head back to that ship. We'll, we'll trade that ship in later. We'll get some money for it. Now there's many things under the ocean you can get. There are abyssal horrors down there you can get hadal cores from. You can, or the eyes I should say from. You get armor clams where you can get living pearls. Um, you do have Hmm, humming sex, there must be something under there. The submerged relics, that's where you can get Hadal cores from, very much so. Those are worth quite a bit of money. We're not going to get any of those right now. We're just going to head back to the ship that we originally came in on. I think we've gone a little bit off task. There it is. There's our ship right there. your life support oxygen is going down real quick here so keep an eye on that all right we're back to our original ship and you see primary starship has been switched so we can pull that ship out of the water anytime we want just by making it appear on the ground in front of us just as an example yeah i love that if i want to you can go into your x menu Summon vehicles, and there's the ship we're usually we're using right now. But if you go over here, select other ship, I can pull a Nemesis of the Sleep, or the Engen Etni. Et 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 uh, if I can get a, find a place, I can actually make it land. That is. There, see, yeah, I found a green place. There, I can pull it in like that if I want to, but I'm not going to right now. All right, let's get out of here. Next stage. What is next? Let's find out. Okay, we do have to pin a base, so let's go ahead and get out, and we do have to make this base. So let's find out what it takes to build one of these. 
Let me get to a spot where I can stop for a second. There we go. Um, Z. Uh, let's see, it requires five metal plates, four crystal sulfides, and 100 salt. Okay, the crystal sulfides and the salt will get here. So let's take a look around. Crystal sulfides inhabit under the water. You can also get salt from things in here. So, like, for instance, these plants here. Let's check it out. Carbon. The tall, skinny ones are usually a good bet. Yeah, cytophosphate and salt is a secondary component. Ah, see, that's a salt option for option right there. So now what happens, though, if you do harvest it, things may appear to try to attack you, to get you to stop. I got 50 salt out of that. How much did I get? 33 salt. We need one more. Ah, there we go. And we'll get one more. There we go. And you'll notice these guys popped out. They will attack. They don't hurt too, too bad, but they will attack you. Let's go ahead and recharge our deep water. And now the next thing we need is we need um, crystal sulfides. They're kind of a little bit harder to find, but they're the things that blow water out of their vents. They, uh, if you saw any of my rocket couch videos, you'll understand that that's, that's what those are. They don't appear as easily as the, um, as far as on your radar is concerned, as armored clams. Oh, there's one right there. Usually within 100 U, you, you'll find one. Let's go over here. We needed four of those, so we need a couple of these plants. They only carry three each. And is this one? Oh, it is right there. Okay. And they do explode. Oh. Swim away. Let it explode. It will burn you. Okay. Two and... Three. So we need one more. They will not repopulate their crystal sulfide, so you have to look around. We'll go over here. So we got plenty of salt. We just need more crystal sulfides. That looks like it could be one in the distance right there. Let's check it out. Yeah, I think it is. Yep. Only within 100 U does it appear. And you probably want to grab a couple extra. It looks like there's one in the distance there, too. And, yeah, these things take a lot to charge. Keep them charged up. Oh, 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 oh. They don't blow for long like that, but... Yeah, there should be one more on the other side. There we go. Because I seem to recall, I think we need more of them. We get our original four, but we have six right now. It looks like there's a couple more plants over here, so let's go ahead and grab them. These, by the way, are alluring specimens. You can gather the objects around the outside and you'll get hadal cores from them, but every now and then they'll launch a nasty monster-like creature. Okay, looks like we got all three from that one. Let me get away from it. And I'll grab these too, because I'm right here. Okay. And let's get away before... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so very good. Very good. We got enough to do what we need to do. And we'll get closer to our ship so we can get our normal one going. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this planet here, searching the ocean. We will need pearls later on, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Once we get up other upgrades for the underwater, at least one more, 
it ought to keep that from going down so quickly. Alright, so there's our ship. Alright. Now, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, while we're here, we pick this up. What is that going to give us? More scan radius and more money, so we're getting a really decent scanner range out of it now. That's pretty good. Oops. Okay. Alright, so we can sell that later, put that in our ship, and we're going to hang on to these. So we need, what was it, four of these plates? Or did we need five? I think we needed five. Yep, we needed five. Okay, let's go ahead and build our Nautilus chamber, which we can only build underwater, and it's got to be deep enough. Like right there. All right, so we got our exocraft built. See? So that's our next part of the mission done. We're already 21 minutes into this. So what's our next thing? Construct a hydrothermal cell. To do that... Whoops, let's get back in here. We need to... We need cytophosphate. And you remember we had a plant that we discovered underwater that had that. Is it this? No. It's that tall, skinny plant, I think. Get to some deeper water. There we go. That's the one. And we'll need plenty of that, so gather a few of those plants. All right. You know, all you have to do is get to land for a few moments and they'll leave you alone. All right. So now we have enough to build one of these. Carbon, cytosphosphate, and salt. We don't have quite enough salt to build one more. We do need at least one more. Um, let me see. There. Okay. There we go. So now we have enough. We'll keep those off to the side in case we ever need them. So we're going to put this in our Nautilus. And actually, while we're at it... Might as well put them in the... Oh, I've just put them in my starship. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Nautilus. Nautilus. And Nautilus. There we go. Much better. Okay. So now we can take our Nautilus. What's our next step? All right. Let's get inside. So we need to charge it. So first things first, let's put this into a supercharged slot. We'll take one of these and put them in there. Okay. And there we go. Explore the depths and search for signs of the stranger's expedition. So, if you use the space bar, like you're trying to jet, it will raise your Nautilus chamber up. You can go forward, obviously. You can't go left or right. You have to point in the direction that you want to go. And it will go that way. Anything it runs into will disappear. See? And you can do all of this. Like, for instance, there's the sunken structure we need to head to is five and a half minutes away. So if you want... See, it'll always stay up there. So if you want, what you can do... A little trick here. A little hint. It'll actually make the mission go by a little bit faster. Because this one is a long-lasting mission. Especially if you keep going like this. Go back to your landing pad. For this. See where it is right there? Get out. And pick it up. Like this one right here, hit the X button, you get your 5, you get your 4, and you get your 100 salt back. And you can leave your Nautilus right here. And then what you can do is you can build that chamber, that landing pad elsewhere, and take your ship. Why? Because instead of 5.5 minutes, it now takes you 15 seconds. 
Let me just park at some land close by. This looks like a good spot to stop. Now you can take the Nautilin out there. It's only 200 units away. So why don't we just do this? See, here we are. Now you'll notice it has two abyssal horrors here. Your hijack laser will be more than enough to take them out. Just wait till their eyes are open. And hey, gather those eyeballs up because uh, they're worth quite a bit of money. There we go. Two of them gone. Now we can go inside. Don't forget to get your life support charged up. And if you need more oxygen, thing. And all these things should be active right now. So you can do those and pick up your items along the way while you're here. Just like any other abandoned structure above ground. All right, so let's go ahead and hit our abandoned terminal. I'll uh, get rid of the goop. And here we go. Despite the decay, the station's mainframe remains functional. The records have clearly been accessed by whomever came here before. The last entry is a download of a high power sonar unit. But there is something strange. The timestamps have been purged, and there is no way to tell how long ago the crew were here. Was this place on land when it was last visited? The horrors that lurked outside must surely have come after. But what drew them here? Unless... So now we have high power sonar. We need a solar mirror. Uh, the crystal sulfides. Now you know why I gathered more. And some ferrite dust. And we now have the... Product. to the, the, the formula to build that. Except we need gold, silver, and chromatic metal. Which I believe we have on the ship. I might have left silver behind. Okay. Where's our ship? There's our buggy. There's our ship. Okay, we'll head up there. So now the Nautilin does go faster than you do with your jetpack. But it can never go faster than your ship. And while you're underwater, once you let go of your jetpack, it charges pretty quick. All right, good deal. We're back. So what do we have? So we need to build that. So we're going to have to build our Nautilin chamber real quick. It can only be built in deep enough water. So we just got to pick our... Yeah, there we go. And see what you can do is one of these blue tab tabs here. You summon it, and there it is. So now we can build it. Do we have enough? We need a solar mirror. Do we have enough to build a solar mirror? We need silver, which I left behind at my base. So I've got to go get some silver. And we'll come back to this here in just a moment. I left it in my base. I wish I had brought my silver with me. Now I would pause, but... One thing we can do. Is head towards an asteroid field. Because most of the asteroid field is not only tritium, but and go figure, it's gonna give me all tritium now, right? Gold. I usually get a lot of silver. See, yeah, I've already got some silver. Tritium, right? How much 
silver we got. We got about 40 or 50. We do need 30, but I would like to have a little extra. I always want some extra, as you know. more do we have 62 all right it's twice as much as we need so let's head back to the planet and we should be able to pinpoint our exocraft should hmm really thought we'd be able to see it This is going to be a little bit fun. I probably should have dropped a base computer or a save point down in order to be able to find everything I was looking for. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the first available spot to land on. Looks like we've got a couple over here. Yeah, this looks good. And we never picked up our Nautilin chamber. Okay, let's consider something real quick here. Oh, what do you know? I think we're in the general area. Interesting. Okay, that we just passed by the ship. This is where we landed originally. And this is the direction it took us in. Let's just take a look, because I think we'll find it here. Let's go ahead and land here, and we'll take a look. See, these are the things you have to deal with sometimes, so I'm, I don't mind keeping this recording going, rather than pausing and telling you I'll look for it. So our exocraft is right there. So by foot, it would have been 40 minutes away. Let's see how far away we really were. Ah, 40 seconds off. It's not terrible. Just going to go up into the upper atmosphere because we're going to get a little bit of a faster roll. See? There we go. Whoops. Bouncing a little bit. Yeah, see, that looks normal, right? <laughs> Okay, there we go. I think we're about to land right there. Go figure. Okay. So we're close enough to the Nautilin, I think. No, we're not. How about here? Yes, we are. So now we can build the solar mirror, and we can build our sonar. And there we go. We're all set. So. Our next step is to use the high power sonar to look for something. So, we're going to just take off for a second. While we're thinking of it, we're going to go down here. 
and pick that up so we can get our stuff back. And back in here. Alright, so now we need to use our high power sonar. It says to look for sunken wrecks. There's a freighter crash in the deep ocean. Okay, so that's what we need to do. Look for a freighter. So if we go to X and you see use high power sonar as the first thing that comes up. Look for crashed freighters. Sunken wreck. That way. Okay. If we go that way. Six and a half minutes. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. A little bit of technical problems there, but we're back to normal. So now we're going to take our starship and head over to this spot over here. 20 seconds away. And we'll check the second part of this. As you see at the top of the screen, it's telling us how far away from it we are. Now the good thing about these sunken wrecks, as you can see, they're sticking out of the water. A little trick. A little trick here is you can land up here if you're careful. See? We need to go down there. Hitting the water too hard can cause damage. But this allows you to get down there quicker. See? Alright, let's see what our... So this is the breach event. This is eight days after their crash. Located the wreck, but the ship's computer was a washout. We salvaged what supplies we could and left. I don't want to be nearby when the water eats through the reactor housing. Tidal patterns here are increasingly strange. The water has risen rapidly, but we are yet to see it ebb. We could return and salvage more when the water falls away. The survivors made it back to the wreck of the freighter, but moved on soon after. I will have to do the same if, I'm, if I am to find them. Before I leave, I make one final search of the archives. There are no more clues, but I do locate blueprints for some aquatic construction modules. At least, the journey was not in vain. I shut down the distress beacon. There is no one here to rescue. We get all kinds of neat stuff out of this. It's mostly just aquatic construction modules. We'll get 10 items from it. But we won't be building anything too soon. So, uh, let's see. The ship is over here. Now, you notice that my water unit has been operating the whole time. So, even while you're reading all that, you are still using up energy from it. You use a lot of oxygen on this trip, so make sure you got plenty. So, we could try to fly all the way up there if you want. But, if you just go to one end or the other, you can usually go up the curved structure and just walk your way up. Okay, so what's next? We'll just hang out in the ship here. So, we have to use the high-power sonar again to detect abandoned structures on the seabed. So, I guess we should have just stayed down there. Wee. Watch. See? Yep, we got someone trying to attack us right now. Even though we're underwater. 
Okay. Let's use our high-powered sonar to look for sunken buildings. That's what we want. Okay. We need to exit. And gather that back. Looks like we got everything back again. Let's go back to our ship and take out the person who's trying to attack us, I guess. Okay, so where do we head to next? Looks like this way. So this would have taken us about 10 minutes to get there. But by Starship, it takes us a lot less time. So that's the whole point behind doing it that way. It makes it a lot easier for you to do. Cruising along under the water in your Nautilon is pretty neat. You get to see all kinds of marine life and you get to see a lot of neat, neat stuff. In terms of time-wise, like when we're trying to do a video like this, it's usually better to do it this way. Okay, how far out is that? Now, I have a funny feeling we're going to need our Nautilin chamber at some point, so we're going to go ahead and build it again. There we go. Make sure we get everything back. And let's go ahead and take it down there this time. There is no boost to it. Again, it's up, down, left, right, and you can hit your space bar to bring it back up to the surface when you need to. There are no weapons on board. Keep that in mind. Now, see, they will shoot you with their little beam, and it sucks you in and damages you. So, you may want to just take them out. All these structures have at least two. Sometimes they have a third one on top. Just as a... You know, information only. Okay, we're in. Let's go to the corrupted terminal first. Log access signal echo distorted recovering data. Log 62, 12 days later. It was my turn to dive again, to dive today. Once again, nothing of interest, nothing but kelp and rocks. The water is yet to recede. Some of the crew have taken to swimming without their suits. It looks so inviting. So you're starting to get warning messages. The water suddenly increased and for no reason. And then at the same time, they found that they had all kinds of stuff happening at the same time and they didn't know why so they swam without their suits that's a kind of a key moment there okay let's get back in our Nautilin and what's our next step we have to look for more sunken buildings okay it's that way this time it takes 12 minutes to get there so I think what we'll do is we'll head to our ship and we'll fly there. And just so you know about those uh, those eyes. See? They're worth quite a bit. 57,000 each. So, yeah. Go ahead and grab them. <laughs> Sorry. That makes me smile. All right. slowly and head that way. So instead of 12 minutes, now it takes us 30 seconds. We could go up to the upper atmosphere and do it, but this is still much, much faster than if we did it the other way. So again, this is going to be a longer episode than most because this is a long deal. Hopefully we can find some kind of island or something nearby. Looks like there might be one over here. Yeah, here we go.
on an angle, of course. Oh, that looks like a good spot to build it. Here, let's go ahead and get him. Okay. And in we go. Get rid of the goop. Let's see what the story has to tell us. We should be at what about same thing, recovering data. 21 souls now. 12 to 21. The secondary dive team came back early today. They found a cave full of strange crystals, but the lights on the sub cut out and forced them home. They seemed upset, disturbed. But we have to go back while we still have an idea of where it is, before the shifting tides rob us. We'll never build anything without advanced materials. The next log says we fixed the lights on the Nautilin. I'm heading out. Log continues. Now with 23 souls, two more days later. We found the cave. I knew we would find. I knew we could, we would, but what a find. Great towering crystals of brilliant red, rich metal deposits, concentrated deuterium, all we could ever need. We just might make it after all. Now if only we could get a dry night's sleep. And that's the key, isn't it? Okay, we'll grab the stuff while we're here. Anything else in here? Not really. All right. I turned to the Nautilus and used high power sonar to search for the crew. Uh, sunken buildings again. Okay. Okay. That way. 925. So, since our ship's on the way, of course we'll stop there anyway. for the normal one. So that's good. You know, I've just realized my volume is really high. Hold on a second here. Yeah, the game volume is extremely high. I apologize for that. You're going to get some loud video out of that. That was during a Minecraft run that we were doing. We needed the video higher, uh, audio higher on that. Okay. We're going to have to recharge our gravity well soon. Or anti-gravity well, I should say. So there's a lot of sunken buildings. There's also sunken ships under the water, too, that you can find as well. And with the Nautilin, you can find them a lot easier than you can ones on land. Uh, we will land here. All right. How far out is that? Pretty far. Will that be deep enough? No. It's kind of crazy as we get further into this mystery. What happened to these people? So literally, we already know that these people didn't make it. All you're doing here is you're searching for their bodies and finding, trying to find out what happened to them. I 
There we go. In we go. All right, what do we got? Same thing. Read the log. 98 souls. Now, we've gone from like 21 to 98, so it's been like 70 days. I had the dream again. The endless purple waves, mile after mile after mile. A relief at first from the dull crimson ache, but then I can't escape the feeling there's something else there. I look around, and there's nothing. Nothing. I blink, and I see them. Faint at first, just lines, but it's unmistakable. Repeated geometric shapes traced in the sky, row after row of triangles, slowly scrolling past, and I can't explain it, but it's the most terrible thing I've ever seen. It's almost a relief to wake up and see the rain again. Log continues. 399 souls. So now we're getting very, very close to what happened, right? So it's been over 300 days since the last log. They've gone back to that wretched cave. Every one of them. No one is listening to me. We can still build the hyper. I know it. After that, flushing the salt out of the launch thrusters will be easy. We continue. Still 399 souls. We've all had the same dream. The same rambling. The teeth in the sky. Those crystals. It's nonsense. There's nothing else down there. We've taken it all. But what can I do? Maybe I missed something. Maybe they're right. One last look won't hurt. Yeah, it's always that one last look, isn't it? We'll go ahead and grab these extra materials here. Hmm, condensed carbon that time. That's good. Alright, so you see it gets kind of creepy. This whole storyline, it gets really, really strange. Now that we're back to the Nautilin. Instructions, please. Scanner. It says to scan. Okay, scan a new location. Where's our ship? That way. We'll scan over here. You have to go 100 away. Hundred. Scan again. Oh, got to wait for the scanner to recharge. Signal locked. Over that way. Nine and a half minutes. All right, so we'll head to the ship first since it's literally right here. Watch this. Yeah, watch out. It'll roll all its way, all its way usually all the way back to the water if you're not careful. Okay, here we go. So this is kind of the end of the episode. The end of the mission, I should say, at this point. Alright. So we're going to go to one more sunken building, I believe. And I think this is it, if I remember correctly. And you find out really what happened to the crew. So one person made it away made it to another planet. But it was only via... He didn't make it to another planet. He basically made it. Um, well, this is interesting. I have nothing to land on here. Fascinating. Oh, this is kind of weird. I didn't haven't had that happen before. Yeah, I could land maybe there. If it likes it. Hold on, let me see. No? Won't let me? Even with the water receded? No? Okay, worth a shot. So we're going to have to travel a little ways to get there. Let's go up a little higher and just check to see if we can find any land. Wow, okay, we literally are in the middle of an ocean at this point. I would love to land there, but that's under that's submerged as well. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, there's something. That's above water. We'll take it. It's tiny, but it should work. So we'll have a little ways to go in the Nautilus to get there.
Okay, here we go. How far away is it? Three minutes. Yeah, we had to go quite a ways to get there. All right. So you'll see what happens here, because basically that one transmission we found at the very beginning at the 407 soul mark, um, obviously was a transmission that that particular uh, satellite station picked up from this planet. And you saw it was facing that planet, uh, that, that from that moon, I should say, was facing that planet. So they were sending out transmissions, but no one was answering. Too bad you can't get resources every time you crash into something. Alright. Yeah, see, this is the platform I wanted to land on, but it wasn't quite at the surface. So we're going to have a little ways to go to get back to our ship. <laughs> Let's see if we can go up and over. Yep, we can. Okay. How far have we got to go? Another minute. It really took us out the middle of nowhere here, didn't it? Really is cool under the oceans here, I have to admit. Alright, we're approaching our building here now. This one should have the two, sometimes a third. Nope, not this one. If you don't gather them within a certain amount of time, they just disappear. All right, in we go. We didn't have to remove anything this time. Trapped. Sub-reactor leaking. It grabbed me, but they're dead now. Their eyes are all shut. I think my leg is broken. My hand hurts. If I can just find an air tank, I can still get back home. Lock continues. The recording continues, but it's just hours of scratchy silence, the static of the currents. I have a haunting sensation of being watched. I wonder who this crew really were. It seems I will never find out. So you inherited the helmet of the lost diver. And that's what you get out of this. So there you go. That is the end of this. So again, it's a creepy, creepy um, mission or submission. But it gives you all the underwater things that you need to create Nautilin chambers and stuff like that. So uh, where is the... There it is. So it makes you really wonder, you know, of what you should have, should, or what they should have done and everything like that. But they obviously were attacked by creatures underwater and probably the same ones that attacked me, or tried to, anyway. Alright. And you get the bathysphere um, helmet is what you do. Um, the helmet in question it looks just like one of those deep dive helmets from yesteryear, from way, way back. It has those uh, side portals that uh, open to allow air in and out and seals them up. They look pretty cool. They have some lights on it and everything like that, but I don't usually use them. All right. Whee! <laughs> and we can see our ship in the distance there. Alright. So now we're going to take this time to also do another mission while we're in this system. So we are just about an hour. That's what these. What, that's what this particular mission, uh, side mission usually takes about an hour or so to do on your own. 
especially if you read it as slowly as I was. And here we go. But we're also going to do the derelict freighter mission. So I decided to cover them both in one shot. I know that makes it for a longer video that we don't really need, but it's worth it. Okay. Didn't realize I had another one there. Okay, very nice. Let's go back to our exosuit. So there's really nothing else to be gained here. We've got everything we need. Um, you can go into your exocraft and take the stuff out that you want. I'm going to leave these in here in case they're ever needed again. In case I ever pull one of these up. Okay. So there we go. Uh, looks like we got that. I'm going to go ahead and make that while I'm here. Let's make a warp cell and we're going to go ahead and put it in our starship because it could use a little bit of a boost. Anti-gravity well needs charging. We can either use pugnium, which we have a ton of, or radiant shard. I'll go ahead and use the pugnium for now. Okay, so we're going to find derelict freighters. Now, I was asked a question. And we're going to use this character to do it with. I was asked a question. There are derelict freighters that you find. Like, for instance, if I pulse drive and it tells me there's an anomaly out there, and then I appear, and you see, hey, look, it's a derelict freighter. Well, those are different from the ones that you can explore. Those derelict freighters, they can sometimes have some items around it you can shoot at, and you'll get some items from, but you usually call in pirates when you do that. There's another type of derelict freighter you can get, and as you can see, I'm entering the anomaly, because there's one fella in here that will give you a free derelict freighter finder, if you will. And I'll show you this in just a second. Hey, yeah, why can't you give me that during a speed run? All right. And you'll know this guy when you see him. It's this fellow here on the right. Helios? Yes, Helios. So, we can talk to him about stuff, but there's one thing he'll do, is you can he will give you an item in number two. It, it's not showing right now. They'll give you an item that is a uh, derelict freighter finder, but we're obviously going to have to spend money on it instead. So you can get some nanites from them anytime you want by turning in information. Same thing with Ares here. Vortex cubes will get you some stuff. It's not really worth it, but if you transmit milestone data, look how much we just got out of them. Another 1,550 nanites. In case you want to see what the faceplate looks like. I'll show you. This is what we're on right now. The Loth Basti the Lost Bathosphere looks like this. It's an interesting looking helmet. With the right coloring, it could be pretty cool, like maybe yellow. Or blue. That looks pretty neat. But, Shroud of Freedom is what we're going to stick with. And I need to go back to red. And didn't we have that reversed, or is that the way we wanted it? I think that's the way we wanted it. Yeah, we'll stick with that. We're back to normal. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Now, before we get started, I'm going to upgrade something on my multi-tool. For this, I need to come over here to this fella here, multi-tool research. We would normally get this through the regular missions, but I'm going to get it in advance. And that is going to be the Neutron Cannon. Um, pulse Spitter works uh, pretty good, Scatter Blaster even better, but your Neutron Cannon is great for derelict freighters. So let's go ahead and grab that, Then we have to go back in now. Because we need the secondary upgrade, which is the P-Field Compressor. I didn't want the Pulse Spitter, but I just got it by accident. Okay, well that's okay. And if you check out your... See, it's gone. We've already completed it. It has a neutron cannon. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Uh, let's start with putting it right over here. We need magnetized ferrite, magnetic resonator, and wiring loom. Do we have the magnetic resonator? Can we, can we build that yet? No, we cannot. So we're going to have to get that. Uh, we get that from here. And we will have learned that along the way in the storyline too, but I'm getting them early. Okay. Let's go ahead and build stuff. Uh, let's see, we need magnetized ferrite and ionized cobalt. Do we even have any cobalt on us? Yes, we do. 
I am going to grab. And I don't have a personal refiner yet. I am not going to purchase that. We're going to go ahead and land somewhere. I'm just going to run out the window here. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's go land myself on a planet real quick. Not the planet I just came from, though. There's not a whole lot of land there. Or actually, there is, if you find a landed. If you find land, like right there. A storm going on? Maybe. Yeah. Any places I can land? No? Okay, we're just going to go ahead and land. Hmm, sodium farm over there, huh? Okay. Put our portable refiner down, and let's go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of cobalt, or ionized anyway. Get plenty of that. Alright, we'll get that going. So... Basically, we need to we need magnetized ferrite as well, which we don't have a lot of. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab half of that and put it in there as well. We'll get about a hundred. That should do. So, and I'll show you what we can do with the bolt caster in comparison. Because when you get on these derelict freighters, you basically have a problem with, um, unfortunately, uh, bugs. <laughs> Where'd it go? There it is. Pure ferrite. Alright, we'll get about a hundred or so of that. We don't need a ton of it. We only needed, I think, 30. But we needed some for the magnetic resonator, too. So, we might as well get en enough to take it all. Take it all in. Okay, so we need one of these. And if I'm not mistaken, to build it, we're going to need... Nope, that's it. 95 magnetized ferrite is what we needed, so I'm glad we got the extra. We needed a wiring loom. Okay, it is now installed. We need a P-field compressor. We need some microprocessors for those, so let's go back over here. To build those, we need carbon nanotubes. Two, three. And let's see if we can build them. I think we've got enough chromatic metal for it. Yep. Okay, good. There it is. Okay, now we have that. Now one thing I'm going to do too is that I happen to have these upgrades over here. I don't know what they are. I'm just going to drop them in to give us a little extra oomph. Oh, it's already doing more damage. Actually, that's pretty good damage from this. So we'll show you what this can do, and then we're going to show you what this can do later. And you see my neutron cannon is fully charged. Excellent. And just to give you an idea, that's what it does. It does area of effect damage on stuff. Okay? So, anyway. And it runs on carbon, which is even better. Alright, so we have to take this to the space station. Let's go ahead and get going. Alright, where's our space station at? There it is, down there. We're not going to head to the Atlas thing it's trying to point us at. So like I said, we need to find one of these derelict freighters, so we're going to go ahead and get a search unit from the space station instead. If you're far enough into your missions, you can get it on your own from either the space station or once in a while, you'll, once a week, you'll get it from Helios. He'll give you a free one. They're expensive, just to be clear. There we go.
All right, on the left-hand side of the station here, that is now the right-hand side of the station, is the guy in that little tent set up right there, and he's the guy you want to talk to. Don't insult him. Acquire coordinates, see there, five million units. And the next one you buy will be even more expensive. So I went ahead and bought it. That's knocking my price down quite a bit, but that's okay. Now I'll show you what you can get from one of these. So checking my inventory. I don't have a big inventory right now. So we're going to hang on to this for now. I'm not going to really worry about it. I'll put these in the starship. There. All right. We can't use it yet. We got to be out in space first. All right. So as you hand out into empty space, get your pulse drive going. Go into your menu and tune the signal. Then you see at the bottom right it's looking locking on a signal. And if you let go, you now have a derelict freighter. Now this looks different from the ones you keep finding out in the uh, wild, if you will. And as you get close, you'll also notice it has active landing pads on top. Land at one of them. Now while we're doing that, you'll see that it is now active. Now if you have a personal refiner in your inventory, you can stick it in your personal refiner and leave it there. And once you're done with the entire mission, you can take it out and it will be inactive again. So you'll never have to buy another one. I won't have any chance. You know, notice it says, warning game not saved aboard derelicts. Okay? So let's head on inside. Along the way, you're going to find capsules that are floating in midair, like this one. They'll give you sodium. There's some floating helmets to just freak you out. There's a capsule. That's not a capsule. Yes, it is. It is another sodium capsule. And you'll also have oxygen capsules. Go ahead and gather them. There, there's an oxygen one. That is your return point. And this is a heating unit. You notice it's cold in here? Heating unit will def will get rid of that problem. So, let's read that. SV Pride of Dewan status, status. Severe incident. Total lockdown. Access denied. No crew life signs detected. Crew manifest in captain's log. May assist incident diagnosis. Cargo integrity 95%. Salvage and recovery likely. Access door has been automatically sealed and internal systems disabled. Manual restart required to begin recovery. Restart internal gravity. Warning, gravity calibration error, freedom of movement reduced. Internal environmental protection is offline. Attempt manual generator restart. Restart hazard control. Restart error, unable to restore heat control. Protection against extreme cold temperatures required, which we have. Extreme fabri emergency fabrication unit available. Access supply cache. We're going to collect those. We now have them. Supply cache consumed. Additional supplies can be collected within the airlock. Manual controls finalized. Begin door seal override. Yes. Okay. We can also complain, claim more supplies right here. You see all the stuff it's giving you at the top right? So you're getting a lot of stuff here. All right. The door seal is open. And you'll notice that we're moving slower. You can run, but you can't run very fast. So while you're in here... Ah, there you go. There are dangerous environments full of environmental hazards and hostile entities. Locate valuable savage well, special items that can be exchanged aboard a space station. <sighs> Locate terminals without analysis visor. Collect data from terminals to learn the fate of the crew. Use a scanner to highlight loot in the current, within the current room. Claim highly valuable technology from the engineering core. Okay, so now you know what this is for. I'm going to turn on my headlamp. You'll notice that this guy is in there. If you shoot at him... And uh, what am I using? Neutron cannon? We're going to go ahead and use the bow caster, okay? They will shoot at us. See? And you'll notice that my bow caster did not do a very good job of what I needed to do. So I'm going to switch over to neutron cannon. We're going to see how that does before we do so. There we go. 
And we just doubled our damage. Okay, shall we? Now you notice that there's briefcases around here. These these things are useless. You'd get stuff from them, but it's not really worth your time. Scavenge the boxes. Logs. Check them out. It'll tell you the story. Access for analyst entity Godel. Timestamp. Should never have allowed them on board. Thought we were free from this. Their entire head. Something, something. Okay. Now you notice we got some nanites and we got some other materials. We got... If you'll notice here, tainted metal, you need that. Hang on to that, that's good to get. Okay, there's other stuff in here. Let's go ahead and check out the entire room. Turn on the next heating unit. Now you see I broke that open and it gave me tainted metal. So sometimes you'll get good stuff. Oh, it opened that and I got tainted metal. Let's check out this part, this snippet because one of these gives us information. Your crew record follows. Operations Entity Pui, uh, let me see, Specialism AI Security, Personal Locker Contains Dynamo, Boots protector, Boot Protectors, pardon me, Omar Pills, and Assorted Delicate Sketches. Last accessed yesterday, Detailed Scan Reveals Contents are Coded in Acidic Residue. Okay, Acidic Residue. Doesn't look like there's anything else in this main chamber here. If we go into the sub-chamber, you'll notice there's a little container here. We got a vector compressor. How much is that worth? Let's take a look, shall we? 150,000 units, 50,000 each. So this is what these are for. So just to give you an idea, what we get from that is living slime. Really not worth our time. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so you notice that there are doors. There's a door here and a door there. I'm gonna go to this door first. There's some lockers here. Let's go ahead and open those. Got a Viking dagger from one. And a Gek Relic from the other. And it looks like, oh, we have some boxes over here I didn't see. Vector Compressors again. Got three more of those. Hypnotic Eye. Okay, two of them. Open the door. Ah, okay, it's one of those ships. So this and these festering jewels will give you living slime. It's not really worth your time. But you see them glowing in the distance. They will release bugs. Let me show you, shall I? And you'll notice that there are no bugs anywhere. Oh, there's these little guys right here. Okay. It takes them out locally. And the sodium usually helps you recharge things, but we're going to use our dioxide to recharge our cold entity here. And we're just going to gather with, that, with impunity. Okay. So as I pick up things, the snippets are important because you do need something from it. Polyfiber, ancient bullion, aronium, geck organs, huh? Not accounted for. We're still not getting what we need. This looks like it's going deeper into the ship. Let's come back here in just a minute. There's a certain method to the madness, if you will. Let's check out the other door because the other door probably has a smaller chamber in it. Yeah, it did. I should have went here first. Okay. Ignore the microwave ovens. They're not cooking anything, really. There is one thing in here. We, looks like we got nanites from it. And it doesn't look like there's anything else in here, so... Okay, so we've mapped out a third room. You see it says zones mapped, three of eight. Look for those snippets of information here and there, because they give you access to other things. I did open that, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay. Like this one here. Let's check it out. Personal data recording, general hand, auto transcribing, breaking down in the warp reactor, loose in the living quarters. It was hardly it was hardly them anymore. Ah, and there we go. Security credentials is what we're looking for. We needed that. Used ten days ago. Alright. Looks like we got another briefcase. And if you do a scan, it'll tell you all the areas that you can get stuff. See, they highlight them purple. More snippets, if you care to read them. That we already read. And after a while, they stop. Two shots. Takes them all out. Just a hint. One, two...
I don't think there's any more loose. So you see how the um, neutron cannon does a lot better at taking these guys out. And you can clear these ships a lot easier rather than just shooting at them with a single shooter. Okay. You get a lot of nanites from these things. You'll get units from them. So definitely worth it. You'll get a lot of living slime if you care about that stuff. More vector compressors. More oxygen. Okay, I am going to clear this place out. Got them all. Unbelievable. That was fun. Okay. You want to hit these big terminals. Okay. Access to crew manifest. Attention to what it says. Crew status status as of last shipwide bioscan was 12 days ago. Training officers, duty officers, crew status, supernumeraries. Update the biostan. Bioscan. No detected. None detected. Retrieving last known crew positions. Okay. So we're going to leave. So now we have the crew manifest. That's worth a lot. So hang on to it. That's a door we just blew open. So we're going to go ahead and continue to head in this direction. Let's do another scan and see what we can find. There's a briefcase we haven't accessed yet. Okay. Couple crates. Looks like we got all those. Those are opened already. Anything else? I don't see anything else. Okay. So we're good. Let's go ahead and leave this area. Alright, we got all kinds of lockers and stuff in here, so this is good stuff. You can lead the, read the logs if you wish. I'm going to leave them alone. And I'm just going to gather stuff. Yep. Got to be close enough to these to open them, even though they're on the ground. More tainted metal. That all of them? That's all of them. Unbelievable. That's hilarious. I didn't know it would be that easy. Did I get this one? I think I got this one. Yeah, I must have gotten that one. Alright. Another case right here. Oh, wasn't trying to do that. Maintenance crew found pseudo-class object in the cargo bay. Performed full spectro spectrographic analysis. Inconclusive results, cross studies required. So, you just learn more about the story about why they did what they did. Interesting. Got a Hadal core. Gek relic. Alright, anything else that we're missing? I think we already got all those. And we already hit this, didn't we? Yeah. Nope, we haven't hit this one yet. At least I don't think so. Captain's DNA, yes. Ship up bias can indicate severe incident status override ability, indicate captain's fate to begin. We're going to say deceased. Input accepted. Duty officer may take command. How to authenticate as duty officer to continue. There we go. We have the one login that we have. Welcome officer, or whatever. Log your log will record you as temporary commander. Last significant entry from master. Wait follows. Read captain's log. Tight stamp. Atlas interface remains alone. Traveler craft dock from time to time. No others. Observations continue. Sentinels return after 10 cycle absence. Thousands this time. More than possibly accumulate within the interface's hull. All readings remain the same. Our sensors are faulty, of course. Date stamp. A freighter is approaching a long range scanner. It claims to be a corv to claims to a Corvax vessel, though we hear nothing from the convergence. Ooh, a trick of the enemy. We destroyed the freighter. Arrival. Small craft retrieved bodies from the wreck. They look just like our own, each carapace identical, each residual echo. Ah, wow, that's weird. What did they want with us? What were they trying to do? 
So we got the captain's log. The only other thing we need is the engineering log now. Alright, did we get everything out of here? I think we did. Alright, let's move on to the next section. Looks like we're going down a shaft. Okay. Going around this way. Not sure why I keep bouncing forward every time I do that. That's kind of weird. When you go through these passages, look for stuff that are laying around. Things floating in the air. I love it. Okay. Okay, anybody home? I don't see anything. Just kind of clearing it up a little bit so I could see. Uh, looks like one briefcase. And it doesn't look like there's anything else in here. Okay. Going down again. There we go. Okay, looks like we got it. So six of eight, you'll notice we've got six of eight rooms. Anything in here? Literally nothing in here. Yeah, we got one briefcase. More units. Okay. And it looks like we're in one of the final areas. That's it. Got them all. Let's scan one more time. Okay. We have the one box on the floor. Projectile. Great. Got this one. That. Tainted metal. And whatever's in there. Which is an enormous metal cog. It's amazing how much you can carry on your person, isn't it? All right. All right. Water vector compressors, huh? More of those. All right, so we're in our last area. You see we're in eight zones mapped. Sometimes you see floating green things that wander around, but uh, they're sort of harmless. I wouldn't worry about them too much. So before we head back... Stable plasma. Let's gather everything from in here. No, I was trying to get into there. Thank you. We could look at the logs and find out what happened, but it's really not necessary. You cannot jump, by the way. No, nope, can't get anything past those. Okay. Let's see. Looks like we got something here. More vector compressors. Another heating unit. Alright, it doesn't look like there's really anything else left in here. I think that's pretty much it. So you basically, it's, it's a plethora of stuff that you can get out of here. Let's take a look. Notice that it's really kind of filling up my inventory here. We got more than we need of this. So think about what this is worth. This is worth something elsewhere. 900,000 units, that's worth. Okay. Enormous metal cogs, 15,000. These are worth a lot to the right person. You could take that and you could turn it into nanites later if you want. Hypnotic Eye. Or Gek Relics and those relics and stuff like this. So this isn't actually the richest one I've ever been in. But it's not bad. I don't know if we turned on the other unit. Fabricate technology upgrade, so we can get a technology upgrade if we want. We've got a freighter bulkhead, which is worth a lot. 
but the technology upgrade could be good too. We're going to get a lot of upgrades as we go, so I'm not going to get that, get that for now, or you can get nanites, but you can only get one of the three. I'm going to get for the freighter bulkhead, for the freighter I eventually get. And that's it. Now we get a cargo bulkhead. And if you look at it, it's actually worth quite a bit, so... Alright, let's see if this works. I don't know if we did it well enough. And we're back to the emergency airlock, which is back to the start. There you go. So we're back to the beginning, where we began. So that's how you get out of here. You turn that on, and you can transport all the way back. And you notice that we just take off once we get out of that section. So that, my friends, is a derelict freighter. Again, not the richest one I've ever been in. There's not a whole lot out here. I mean, you can take a look around if you want. But occasionally you'll just find some things floating around on the on the deck that you can pick up, but they're not really worth that much. Sodium and oxygen, that's about it. Okay. That's it. So we'll head over to our ship. And it isn't until you leave the ship far enough that you will finally see the space station. There it is. And until you get in and out of your ship again at like a space station or something like that, your your progress is not saved. Keep that in mind. So if you die in there, you're gonna go, you're gonna reappear next to your ship, and you'll have to start the, fr the freighter all over again. Neutrino can uh, neutron cannon. I s suggest strongly you have with you for the bug infested ones. And just to give you an idea, like in our ship right now, we've got. We don't have any of the uh, tainted metal. We have that back at our base, but give you an idea of what it's used for. If you go here and talk to him again, I'm not going to get another unit, of course. So I can sell the crew manifest and he'll give us some of that tainted metal. Okay. Or I can go across the way. You see there's another emblem over there and I'll show you this real quick. And you can turn it into this guy, the envoy. And you see, you can donate it, and you'll get faction increase at this point. So I'm going to donate just the crew manifest. And you'll notice my faction increases, standing increases twice with the Corvax. If I turn in the captain one, I'll get a plus five standing increase with the Corvax. But the captain one, I'm going to turn into him. And what do we get? An extra 300 tainted metal. And with that tainted metal, what can we do with it? We can acquire more for 10 million. You notice the price goes up. But rather than ask, don't ever ask what they're selling because you'll never be able to do anything here. Purchase old scrap. And what you do is you get suspicious packets. You can get repair kits. You can get odd items that you can put on your, as far as decorations on your ship, including an anomalous face transformation that I have already purchased, apparently. Um, and decals and stuff like that that you can get. And it looks like in this case he has suspicious launch thrusters, too, that we could buy from him if we wanted to. Uh, which I'm not going to... Well, you know what? Nah, I'm not going to buy it right now. But these things give you oddball items. See, I've got about 600, so I can't really afford to buy... I can get one of these and that's it. But if I get two of these or two of these, the tech is better than the goods. So always get the tech if you can. See, one, two. And now I've got it. And then you go in here, and you can check to see what you got. Uh, here it is. One, and it looks like we got a suspicious shield module for us, which has 33% and 33% for health. That's good. Yeah, gives us an extra heart. And this one gives us a suspicious mining beam. We'll add that over here. What does it do for us? Just increase mining speed. That's good. We'll hang on to it. It's always nice to have. Okay. And that's how that works. So that gives you a rough idea of how derelict freighters work. And that should take care of it. So two things we did today in an hour and a half. We took care of the Dreams of the Deep, which was, like I said, the creepiest episode you'll ever see in there. Um, and then, of course, we did the derelict freighter. So hopefully we've answered a couple questions out there. Again, I apologize for the length of this video, but it was the only way to cover everything. And now you know how to get all that done. 
So we will see you folks in the next episode. Please feel free to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we thank you very much for watching. See you again in another week. Take care, everybody.